Regardless of race, language, and religion, these are the words that are marked in Singapore's National Pledge. Many Singaporeans pride themselves on living in a society that promotes racial and religious harmony and tolerance. However, in a post-9-11 context, a rise in Islamophobia has brought about widening divisions. Very often, notions of race and religion are linked within public consciousness, such that the identities of Malay and Muslim are assumed to overlap. Yet the landscape of diverse racial and religious identities in Singapore proves much more complicated. In this video, we zoom into the lives of four young adults to explore how they understand their identities as Muslims with Chinese ethnic backgrounds in Singapore. Hi, so could you tell us your name? Uh, I'm Darren. Darren Mook. Okay, yep. great. And uh, how do you identify your ethnicity and nationality? Um, I'm Chinese and Singaporean. Mm -hmm. And are you born Muslim or a convert? Convert. So my name is uh, Hey. Okay, I have my name Sakina. My name, uh, my name William is not really used first. Firstly, so my name comes up Ismail first. Which in this region, they would see it as a Malay name. Um, of course, when you go outside, they don't see it as a Malay name. But the reason why, um, Chinese Malays Indians would see my name Sakina as Malay is just because it's not Chinese and it's not Indian, but they would not say it's a Muslim name. You see, so again, my name is not even regarded as a religious, like, it doesn't show that I belong to the Muslim community, I just be, do not belong to their community, you know what I mean? For some of our interviewees, their names reflect the tensions they experience in belonging to various communities. For Ishmael, his name expresses his identity as a Muslim, which he feels is more salient than his ethnicity. For Darren, retaining his pre-conversion name mirrors his efforts to balance his new Muslim identity while sustaining his cultural and ethnic heritage. Sakina sees her name as representative of her ambiguous position in between multiple communities, often defined by others in terms of what she is not. Darren and Peyun both identify as Chinese. For Ishmael and Sakina, who have both Chinese and Malay heritage, the ethnicities on their identity cards do not necessarily capture how they identify themselves. Mm, ethnicity from the IC is Malay. Okay. My mom is Teochew, full Chinese, and my dad is Malay and Teochew. Um, by law, um, as in in my ident IC, in my identification card, uh, I'm noted as Chinese, but uh, lineage, I'm half Malay, half Chinese. Yeah, my mom's Malay, my dad's Chinese. So my paternal grandfather is Malay. The rest is Teochew. Yeah, the nationality, I was born in China. Okay. The so education background, I completed my primary school in China. Uh, then uh, my secondary school, I studied halfway in China. Then I completed the O-levels le in Singapore. Then I went to uh, Singapore Poly. Oh, okay. So when did you actually move to Singapore? 15, I was 15. 15. Uh, year so I'm three quarters uh, Chinese, but on my IC is Malay because in Singapore law, uh, the IC takes from the dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, for last time lah. Now we can choose, <laughs> but uh, last time was always the dad side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, nationality Singaporean, third generation. In Singapore, the ideas of Malay and Muslim are linked sometimes to the point of interchangeability. This can cause some Muslims, like Sakina, who are not Malay, to feel alienated from the Singaporean Muslim community. Ishmael, however, feels a strong sense of closeness to the Malay community by virtue of their shared religion. As Payun has deepened his Muslim identity over the course of his religious education in Singapore, he has come to surround himself primarily with Singaporean Muslims. Let's say for Chinese, uh, the, the first thing they would think, oh, he's Malay. Then eh. But then like example I I I I make mooncakes during the Mid Autumn Festival and then I give my give my colleagues lah. Because I make myself and then I give my colleagues. Then then they'll be like, oh he's he's Chinese. <laughs> then yeah. Uh they'll be confused lah. Un unless yeah. But I 
usually are just put Chinese Muslim lah. So they have to deal with this uh, dichotomy that they like see. Mm. Like, eh, is is not what usually they meet. Mm. Okay, it's different for Malays. Because since my identity is Muslim first and foremost, they can identify with it more, I guess. That's why I feel lah. So they won't see, they will see as different, but a close different. If you understand what I mean. Convert into Malay. <laughs> they use Malay and Islam, uh, Muslim interchangeably. Yeah. Because cause the Malay culture uh, is being so entrenched. Entrenched is a bad word, right? Like, it's so immersed into yeah, Islam immersed. such that then there's, can, there's a very thin line. Even if uh, Malays, right, see something as bad, in Islam it will be bad. I hope. <laughs> if they see something as good, then Islam will be good. Uh, from the Islamic perspective. So it's been so um, gelled so well such that uh, when Chinese they see oh you're Chinese Muslim no you're not Chinese Muslim you're, you're Malay already. <laughs> so a guy can look obviously Indian but he will be noted as a Malay just because he's Muslim and he knows the Malay adat and he knows Malay language. But for me because I don't know Malay language I don't know Malay adat even if I look Malay I'm not Malay. Uh, so in all sense My non malayness Has set me apart from Muslims Because since young The Malays Who are also Muslims Know what are the do's and the don'ts But I don't So I always felt like this sets me apart from society No one would want to know me if I wore the hijab Because for one Without the hijab The Malays really don't accept me Even if I wear it They still won't accept me Because internally I'm not Malay And if I were to wear this This was a A larger barrier You know Like I Don't only um, Bar the Malays from me I bar the other non-Malays from me Oh I was in China Just like normal Chinese Muslims there I don't know anything about the religion The only thing about, about the, I know about the religion Is that we don't eat pork That's the only thing I know I didn't even know that there is such thing called fasting in Ramadan. Oh. I didn't know that there is such thing called prayer. When, when was that? When? How old were you? Fifteen? Uh, before I came to Singapore all the way? Fifteen. Okay. And I didn't know like... I didn't even know like who is Prophet Muhammad or this thing. Two stages, uh, it's very different. Okay. So at the beginning stage, although... I kind of know myself as a Muslim but since I wasn't a practicing guy so I don't I don't really like find any awkwardness in that so it's basically the food I eat that's the only difference I have with other people I don't go and pray I don't have any other care about the religion yeah, so that's the only thing now I'm pretty much I would say closer to the Muslim community than the non-Muslim community. So, the, my only interaction with non-Muslims will be during my working time in the office time. At home, my Muslim identity is definitely kind of, I wouldn't say, say suppressed, but it's not foregrounded. Um, if anything, my family members actually foreground it for me uh, because they would be the ones reminding you, know, oh, you cannot eat this, right? Or like, yeah, might we find somewhere else, or uh, like um, you know, just oh, you cannot drink this. I forgot, you know, or like I'm like we won't get this for you. Uh, you can you don't have to join in or whatever. So, um, I don't usually bring it to the front. During during Islamic events, I feel more Chinese, cause usually I mean even if let's say the event the Islamic event was. The medium was in Chinese, uh, sorry, English, right? Um, there will still be bits and pieces of Malay because the people who were speaking at the event are are just Malay by nature, by ethnicity. So, so like, um, even though it's supposed to be in English, they accidentally spurt out like spout out Malay. It could be a joke, which I want in on the joke, but I don't get the joke because I don't understand the joke. So. Uh, everyone will be laughing and I'll be like, uh, ha, 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 like, I don't get the joke. So when they hear Ismail, I mean, personally, I identify myself first and foremost as Muslim. My my racial identity is quite fluid 
because it differs in circumstances. When I'm with Malays, they see me as Chinese. Because they see me different. When I'm with uh, Chinese, they see me as Malay. Because <laughs> I'm... Confirm is different. <laughs> you are not Chinese <laughs> in that sense. In fact, I recently... I went through a few phases like, when I was thinking about food came in. Because like, my mom, obviously, when the first thing... The first thing she asked me when she found out about my conversion, she was like, how am I going to cook for you? And, on. and I just told her, um, it's... It's fine. It's like my, so it went through a few like pendulum swings. So at first, I was like, it's fine. Just continue cooking while you're cooking. I just won't eat the pork stuff. Uh, and this was informed by a, my friend's mother, who herself was a convert. So she told me, she, I mean, she shares her mother's kind of like worries. Right? So she told me, don't make life difficult for your mom. You know, like, don't, don't make her buy a new set of cutlery, a new set of like kitchenware just for you, just because of this halal thing. She said, if you don't eat pork, just, just don't. For all of our interviewees, religious, ethnic, and cultural identities are situational. In part because of language, Sakina tends to feel her Chineseness more intensely in Muslim settings that are primarily Malay. Darren, as the only Muslim in his family, finds that it is his family who foregrounds his religious identity for him, especially when it comes to everyday practices like eating or prayer observance. Ishmael emphasizes that his feelings about his ethnicity change depending on his surroundings while his Muslim identity remains constant. During Chinese New Year, I, also, I feel even more Chinese because I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm home. Um, I don't feel like I'm different from the norm. Yeah, because I think um, my Chinese family is quite colorful. Um, while I said that most of them are, have no religion, right? As I grew older, most of them um, started adopting Christianity. Um, so, no one ever really fit. Like, there wasn't a norm and then you are the other. Yeah, whereas in my, in like, Muslim settings, right? I am the other. For one, I don't understand their jokes. For two, um, there may be things that they have learned before, like, about the religion or something that's a, very, a norm that it rolls off their tongue um, but it's not for me so I would have to do, delve further like uh, more in depth into something that people have very easily if that makes sense yeah actually I guess Ramadan is kind of when it really gets you know uh, the most far grounded even at home because I am not eating um, but I'm just a one out of a hundred person that totally don't care about identity I just care about value, what is right and what is wrong. That's why to me, I don't have any of these issues. For, for example, I don't celebrate Chinese New Year. Mm. I don't celebrate any other, I don't even celebrate birthday because I don't see any value in that. And to me, it's enough for me just to follow whatever the religion that teaches me. During some points in the year, our interviewees feel certain parts of their identities more strongly. Ramadan brings Darren's religion to the fore, while Chinese New Year makes Sakina feel at home in her Chinese culture. Peyun's choice not to celebrate Chinese New Year demonstrates his ideological commitments to what he considers a traditional interpretation of his religion. Like on a ground level, I think that by virtue of the fact that I think a large number of Chinese Muslims would be converts, that during the conversion process, I don't think my experience is unique. I don't think it's unique that people question why you're converting. If not for marriage, then, you know, oh, are you being radicalized? Um, I mean, I don't have friends to back this up, but uh, I don't imagine my experience to be unique. I, I wouldn't be surprised if other people have been, like, given, like, a suspicious eye because of the fact that they're converting. In fact, I have heard of... Uh, these are not direct friends, but I have heard from others that uh, they know people whose friends left them because they converted, um, and that there is a fear of you know your lifestyle won't will not fit with um, our group of friends. Your lifestyle may be threatening. Your lifestyle might be dangerous. Um, yeah. I think most people do not take Malays to be affected by the. 9-11 like they do not see a correlation ah mm. like oh okay got some crazy kids just <laughs> uh, destroyed 
uh, destroyed, uh, killed uh, millions of people, and we're sad about it. Mm. And we, yeah, uh, and and obviously a normal human being <laughs> would not <laughs> would not advocate or or agree with such a, a an action. So, but there will be a caution, uh, like it might happen to uh, Malay youth or Muslim youth, or it might happen to anyone who suddenly become extreme due to uh, the wrong sources, all that. So, like like example, my cousins, when when they want to convert, oh, you want to become terrorists. Well, to locals, I would say open your eyes. Uh, you know, not even just to, not even just to like other religions. You know, don't even you don't even need to start there. Just open your eyes to the rest of Islam. I think that's what I would say to local Muslims, and for globally, I would say open your eyes to the rest of the world. Yeah, I think those are kind of what I would say. The worldwide fear of religious radicalization is prevalent in Singapore. Darren and Ishmael explain that Muslim converts face increased scrutiny in this realm from those closest to them. Our interviewees' stories show how increased religiosity in Singapore and globally affects people on highly personal levels. Along their journeys of religious development, our interviewees have each changed how they see themselves as Muslims. Through this process, they have learned to negotiate their multidimensional religious and ethnic identities in a society in which Malay Muslim is the assumed norm. As some strands of religious revival call for increasingly homogenized forms of practice, our interviewees exemplify the reality of diverse identities and individual experiences that characterize religious resurgence. 